All right, so today we're going to be talking some more about expected value and horse racing. And what I want to actually look at um, is look at expected value a little more deeply. So I think horse racing a lot. My um, grandfather was obsessed with horse racing. He actually liked buggy racing. And he had this fantasy that he would support his family through um, betting on horses every day. Well, of course, it didn't work out. But anyway, I always think about him because he kept taking us to the races anyway. He'd go once a week um, and play, stop playing every day, and um, wouldn't always win. And so I kept thinking about what this meant. So let's take a closer look. So to figure out how you're going to do in a race, you can use expected value, right? Our weighted averages, we've done this before. Here's your equation for expected value, where x is all of the different discrete outcomes that you could get, and p of x is it's a probability for each of those possible outcomes. So if we look at buggy racing, you can bet $1,000 on that or whatever amount you want. But let's say he's going to bet $1,000. So first thing we do is we build something called a probability model. Now, the word probability model or the phrase sounds pretty fancy, but it's actually not that fancy. It's just what you know. It's a table showing your payout, all of your X's, all those discrete things that could happen. Um, so if the one he bets on, he loved betting on the number five, um, comes in first place, he gets 5,000. If it comes in second, 4,000, third, 1,500. And if it doesn't place, he just gets zero and basically loses $1,000. Okay, so the rest of the probability model is going to give us a probability of each of these possible events. So once I've done that, I can actually find the expected value. I first will check to make sure that it, the model is correct, that it's a full model, meaning that all of these do need to add up to one. A nice thing is that if I hadn't even told you all of these, if I had left out, say, the probability of not placing, you could have actually figured it out by just adding all of these up and subtracting it from one to figure out what goes there. But let's move on. Let's find the expected value. So here's our great equation. We have our x's or p's. I'm going to multiply straight across. As it tells me to do, I multiply these two things to find the weighted value for each of them. And then there's my summation. I add them all up. So we expected that he could win $1,025. So grandpa psyched. Awesome. He comes out ahead overall. Okay, so he comes out ahead overall. But we think that um, the thing about expected value is it's a weird phrase. It probably should be more like expected average value because you never really win $25. You win 5000 or 3000 or 1500 or nothing. This is what you win overall. If he every week played $1,000 on number five, he could expect by the end of the year perhaps he would win, come out at this. And that's great. It's ahead. Um, so should he always bet? The question is, um, is expected value enough info? Because the truth is you really get big payouts or nothing. And so it might not be. We need to think about the risk. Is this number 25 enough information us, for us to make a decision on whether to bet or not? And um, to really get that information, we need something else, which is called standard deviation, which you know well. Standard deviation, it looked like this. We did this before when we had large data sets, and we could um, figure out how much spread there was, right? Whether the values were spread out really wide or whether they were really close together. And this equation is actually close to what we're going to use for expected value. It's going to have a lot of similarities. The equation actually looks like this. So you can see that you still take each value and subtract it. Um, from its average. In this case, we have that weighted average of e of x. And you still square it, but then you multiply it by its probability, and you also sum it all up, and you take the square root. So they're pretty similar. The steps look like this. Okay, So here's all the steps that break down the math for doing this. If you're somebody who can just read this equation, you can just leave this. Um, e of x is expected value. x, of course, is each outcome that you could get, and p of x is the probability of that outcome. All right, so I'm going to go through an example of how we actually do these steps. So let's list these steps again, all right, and walk through it. So to figure out the probability, I mean, sorry, the standard deviation for this, what we're going to do is we're going to take that e of x of um, 1,025 and step one, subtract it from x each time. Okay, and we do that right here, and we get these four values. We do it for each one of these. Okay, then we're going to square the answer, step two. And when you square each of these, you get these nice huge numbers. Notice, please, that when you square that negative number, it always becomes positive. All right, 
Okay, now we're going to multiply the probabilities by p of x. So I'm going to take all of these values and multiply it by each of their probability. And that's going to give me these four values. And now I'm going to add them all up. And last step, I'm going to take the square root. So I end up with a standard deviation of 1,536.84 cents, which was this round off to 1,537. It's a little easier to say that. So now we want to really think, should we gamble? So um, is this really a good thing? Okay, Grandpa's not so happy. Because what this really says is that, yeah, on average you make this, but remember, standard deviation tells you where the majority of the values really lie, like where things really happen. And it actually is pretty spread out. This is your expected value, but it gets pretty spread out along here between either making more, 1,562, um, which remember is just the 562 after you pay, or um, because this goes into the negative, you actually could make, this is your maximum loss of 1,000. So the spread is actually um, quite large. So there's quite a bit of risk in betting. We can't make our, de our decision just based on this $25 profit. We really need to look at whether we can handle big gains, but can we also handle this big um, loss. So this really indicates that uh, the large spread lets us know that this number is definitely not a sure thing. So what you really want to come out with um, knowing about standard deviation in expected value is that expected value is not enough information. Okay, you also need to look at the risk. Um, are all the values that you're going to get really that close to the expected value? So you want to consider the standard deviation. Um, and ask yourself, is that small or large? If standard deviation is small, that means that um, you're actually likely to get that expected value. Okay, that's likely to happen over time. So when you're making your decision of whether to gamble or whether to invest, um, you can really make your decision using the expected value by itself. But when it's large, that means that the expected value is actually, majority of the time, spread out between really high and low values. So you want to consider this and make sure you can handle that risk. All right, I hope this makes sense to you, and I hope you enjoy the coming problems to practice with this.